which is on the Nashville network, and it's in syndication. We have a weekend show in syndication. So are you as passionate about your wine as you are about your filmmaking? I'm very interested in wine. I, I only, uh, I, by luck, fell into that. And uh, we make a wine called Rubicon from the Napa Valley. And we want someday to be, to be making America's, you know, one of America's great wines. And, and certainly the land that it comes from has been making uh, the great wine of America for 100 years. It was the Inglenook estate that where, where I live, where I raised my family, and where we're now making our wine. That's great. Did you ever think you'd be in this business? Never. It was a funny story. It was just that I wanted, because my grandfather, there were a lot of stories. He made wine in the old days during Prohibition. It sounded like so much fun. All the kids would get in the grapes and stuff that I looked to find a little summer house that had an acre of grapes. And by accident, they took us to a, this beautiful estate. And they said, it's being sold. And oh, we said, oh, they said, but it's not for you. you know. Was, and, and over the years, we never forgot it. And then one, we had the opportunity. And uh, it had hundreds of acres. And so we sort of almost, uh, it's like if you inherit a racehorse, you have to race it. And mm -hmm. it was not my plan at all. But I'm very I'm thrilled to have it. All right, let me, let me ask you about the film. Is this a, a nervous period for you? You've put a lot of work into this, and this weekend, essentially, the press is getting a chance to see it, and everyone will pass judgment by next week. Right. Well, of course, I'm very grateful that people have come to see it when it's finished. I think the part that uh, that is a little, uh, you know, I get nervous about is when you're trying to go out of town and do a preview, and then you never know, who, you know, what rumor they're going to say, you know, good reaction to a movie. I mean, honest reaction is fine, but when the film isn't done and people are, I mean, I've had a history. Every time I make a movie, there's always someone who's saying, you know, in the weeks we're finishing it, oh, the film is terrible. And so how do they know the film is terrible? We haven't even finished. I don't know if the film is terrible, you know. But, uh, you know, in this case, there was just like one little uh, article that got repeated and repeated a hundred times that maybe the movie was too gory and stuff. And, and you know, we didn't really change it. It's just that uh, you have to put it into balance. And we have a tremendous love story balanced with a horror story. And obviously, mm -hmm. until it's done and all of, all of the, the final decisions are made and stuff, it's, it's not over until it's over, as they say. Is this an important film for you? Every, every, you know, my career has gone such a way, you know, I had a meteoric rise and, and I was filled with uh, enthusiasm and I, I, I ultimately, being a kind of ex-theater student, I wanted my own studio and I did buy my own studio and we started to launch into a kind of utopian uh, era and uh, unfortunately uh, uh, one from the heart didn't, didn't do as well as uh, it would, was necessary to do and ever since then uh, I've been sort of trying to pay off the debts associated because it wasn't just one from the heart that cost a lot of money it was the whole studio that was sort of you know m midway to being formed and all the investment we had made and the the burdens I had taken then had to be paid off and I basically been paying them off for all these years and, and I'm just just finished doing that but clearly any one of these movies if I if I can you know, let's face it everybody needs a hit the, the guy I mean the guy who made the hit last year needs a hit uh, mm -hmm. uh, everybody needs a hit your company needs a hit my company needs a hit so uh, you know we want to please the audience and yet we don't want to just give them formula after uh, after that happened with the studio did you feel like you had to prove yourself again it, like you said you were the the golden boy for a long time and then you know, this came down, and do you feel like you, you yeah, kind of have to... Yeah, but it's well known that, that, that our tradition, our show business tradition, even in literature and novels, that, the, the, that after someone comes from nowhere, the, the enthusiasm is there for him, and the new person is, of course, celebrated, and I was uh, the recipient of tremendous uh, uh, boost from, from the entertainment press and what have you. And then after you've been doing it a few times, then you, the news is that you're in the, the in the, in the, uh, you're, you're in, uh, you're in trouble, you know. So mm -hmm. then that becomes, I hope that my career has been uh, controversial enough that, that the news will be now that everything is good again, you know. <laughs> so you, you don't know. It's, it's part of the show business. It really is. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, our film is going to open November 13th and it's a very entertaining film, I hope, and fun, uh, and unusual and, 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 and hopefully something that will, people will, will join the ranks of movies that 
you know, people will look at in the future. And if it happens, if a lot of people go next uh, Friday 13th, uh, it means that I can go on and I can, you know, do some of my, uh, uh, my hopes and plans. And if not, then I just have to, you know, see what, what to do then. It is important, of course. Unlike, uh, there are only a handful of directors like yourself where it's a Francis Ford Coppola film. It doesn't matter who's in it. You know what I mean? The fact that, that it's your film carries a lot of weight. I'm sure that's good for your ego, but there's got to be a lot of pressure on you to where critics are reviewing the film because it's your film as opposed to, you know what I'm saying? Well, I think that uh, people, artists, performers, people in my position, if they have any talent, it's good that the press presses them and says, you know, medium good is not good enough and, and strive for more. Obviously, uh, you know, one of my things is I like the movies to be uh, fresh and original. So sometimes I do the film and it gets a sort of mixed reaction. And then five years later, they say, well, that was a great success. I mean, people don't know that Godfather 2 had medium to bad reviews and didn't do a lot of business. Uh, people don't know that Apocalypse Now, uh, you know, was very criticized and because they think, well, that film is still around. But I, my fate, I, I would love, I would be thrilled to make a film that just everyone loved and the audience loved and in my own time. But I, I, I also know that that sometimes with unusual films especially that you don't get that and, and maybe you get it years later. But I also am comforted that of my, you know, whatever a flop is, that of the flops I've made, that you got to admit that they were the most interesting flops, <laughs> and they were unusual, and that maybe they were even not so bad, you know, they were just different. And and I, I feel confident that all the movies I made uh, were were you know greater or lesser, that, but they were they were works of art. They were there was something there. It wasn't just that I made a film and I did it kind of without any interest in it or just did a formula. I always tried to give it everything I had. And it just sometimes it connects with the public and, and, and the entertainment press, and sometimes it doesn't. OK. Thank okay. you very much. Thank it was you. a pleasure. Oh, my